the Democrats know too. They, they're not going to run and say it out on the air, but they know too. And they would love, according to these polls, to exchange him for somebody else. But they don't want Kamala Harris, according to your newspaper, which had a fascinating report this week on her yeah. um, called Kamala Harris is trying to define her vice presidency. This is the headline. Even her allies are tired of waiting. It goes on to talk about how her critics and detractors alike acknowledge the vice presidency is intended to be a supportive role. But the painful reality for Ms. Harris is that in private conversations over the last few months, dozens of Democrats in the White House, on Capitol Hill, and just around the nation, including some who helped put her on the ticket, said she has not risen to the challenge of proving herself as the future leader of the party, much less the country. Even some Democrats whom her own advisors referred reporters to for supportive quotes confided privately yeah. that they had lost hope in her. They used the term quiet panic setting in among key Democrats. What do you make of that, Jeremy? Because it doesn't seem like, it seems like for the mm -hmm. New York Times to write this kind of yeah. article says something. It's interesting because you picked up on the key sentence, the one that I was going to mention, I'm glad you did, is that the people that her office suggested New York Times reporters get in touch with, people who were presumably going to vouch for Kamala Harris and say what a good job she was doing and how she wasn't uh, getting the benefit of the doubt, those people privately told my colleagues that they have lost faith in her and that they don't think that she's doing a great job. That's significant in and of itself, but it also speaks to the lack of competence that she and her staff project. And people across Washington that I talk to have picked up on this. They've complained about it a lot. It's not just that she doesn't have a national profile uh, or that people don't really know what her identity is or, or, or her, her political brand. It's that they don't think that she's very good at her job. And that's a really hard um, image to correct. I will say just one last point here. What I found most interesting was not necessarily the article itself, but what I read in the comments from New York Times readers about Kamala Harris. And it was overwhelmingly, almost to a person, hundreds and hundreds of people, New York Times subscribers and readers who said, we don't think she's doing a good job. She had a chance. She blew it. And that tells you about where you know a certain core constituency um, presumably, uh, of, of Kamala Harris's and, and the Democratic Party, you know, a, a New York Times reader, that tells you what they really think of her and that her standing among, um, you know, people who are, are left of center uh, is, is, is actually pretty low. Mm. What, are, what are they going to do about this problem, Charles? Because if Biden, I mean, he's expected to announce that he's running, but maybe he won't. And even if he does, there's significant fear that he won't be able to serve out a second term were he to win one. Never mind for his first term. He's got a couple of years left on that. Uh, and the Times points out accurately um, that some did not feel she could win the presidency in 2024, but some felt the party's biggest challenge would be finding a way to sideline her without inflaming key Democratic constituencies that would take offense, which leads me to what Ron Klain told the paper, the president's departing chief of staff, which I think is just so telling. He talks about how she carries the expectations that are upon her as the first, you know, vice president who's a female, who's a person of color, who's got, she checks a bunch of identity boxes. She carries these expectations not as a burden, but with grace and an understanding of how much her history-making role inspires others. I mean, my layperson interpretation of that is, it's enough that she's diverse. You're welcome. She's diverse. Just be glad that she's diverse. She's breaking barriers left and right just by being diverse. Nothing more is really required. Well, that was my favorite part of the piece because I think that it is deliciously awkward and it shows the limits and the well-deserved limits of identitarian politics, which judges people based on their immutable characteristics and not the content of their character while pretending to do the opposite. What that essentially means is that if the Democratic Party wants to defenestrate Kamala Harris, it's going to have to tell a whole bunch of people why it was profoundly inspiring to have a half black, half Indian woman as vice president, uh, but it wouldn't be inspiring to elevate that person to the nomination for president. Now, you can say, if you want and should say, 
it's because she's not good enough. But then you have to admit that that was true all along. On the question of who could succeed Joe Biden, this is Biden's greatest strength. I was asked at an event I did recently, how can it be in a country of 330 plus million people that Donald Trump and Joe Biden seem to be the front runners for the presidency? And the answers are actually very different between the parties. The answer for Trump is that Donald Trump has a hold on primary voters. They like him. They've rejected the Republican parties that previously existed and they're attached to Trump. I personally don't think Trump's going to be the nominee. I think that that attachment is dwindling. But if he is, it will be because he uh, came in and reformed the party and the primary voters liked it. The reason that Joe Biden is the front runner is that the Democratic Party's bench has been chopped up over and over and over again for 10 to 12 years. It got destroyed in 2010. It got destroyed in 2014 and 2016, and uh, to a lesser extent in 2020. Even though Biden won the presidency, Democrats did not do as well as they had hoped in the Senate, in the House, and in the states. Uh, The simple answer there is there isn't really anyone else. Uh, Kamala Harris is a disaster. Pete Buttigieg is a joke. Uh, There are some other figures around the edges, perhaps Gavin Newsom, but I'm not convinced the Democratic Party wants to nominate a Californian in 2024, especially Mm -hmm. if Ron DeSantis is the nominee. I don't think a California v. Florida fight is going to go very well in the rest of the country. I've never been able to compost before. It would always seem too complicated, seem too weird, (laughs) but not anymore, thanks to Lomi. Lomi is so cool. It is allowing me to turn our food scraps into dirt. With the push of a button, we actually now look forward to clean up after dinner. Lomi's a countertop electric composter that turns scraps into dirt in under four hours. There's no smell when it runs, and it's super quiet. Thanks to Lomi, I have way less garbage each week. Instead, we are turning our food waste into nutrient-rich dirt that I can then feed to my plants. Now, I am composting. I'm a composter now, and you could be one too. And I am creating soil instead of waste, and I feel like a better person. I have a basically limitless supply of dirt from my garden, and I'm having fun after dinner with my kids. If you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just make cleanup after dinner that much fun and easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash MK, L-O-M-I dot com slash MK. Use the promo code MK to get yourself 50 bucks off your Lomi. $50 off when you head to L-O-M-I dot com slash MK. Use that promo code MK at checkout. Food waste is disgusting and it smells bad. Lomi is your solution. Lomi.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.